Hey, good morning, afternoon, evening, everybody. Thank you all for being here today. And let's see. We are at a hotel in the Denver metropolitan area, so hopefully it's um, the sound quality is going to be all right. We're not picking up on all the background noise, but um, gosh, good to see everybody here this morning. And as always, um, you are welcome if you are here live to come over here on the chat side um, and chat with everybody here. There's a lot of great people that share experiences here live. And then if you have a question, be sure to please put that in the questions tab so I don't miss it. And uh, Australia, North Carolina, Hot Springs, South Dakota. I know there's you guys are from all over the world here and really appreciate you guys all joining us. And now this is not an alcoholic beverage this morning. It's my chai tea using hotels cups. So, um, we will start with a quick meditation to go into the heart space. <clears throat> so I see there's still a few people jumping on here. Hey, Kendall, you got your new On the Wings of Talk. Yeah, good to hear that. Yeah, it's, it's been a pretty phenomenal tool, as are all of the new, the new rings that we have. Um, wisdom rings all right <clears throat> we'll go ahead and take a quick three breath into the heart so just putting your attention to your physical heart finding your light your soul's fire taking a deep breath from the earth breathing that up through the feet and into the heart Connecting heart to heart with the earth. Second breath, connecting heart to heart with creation. Breathing in that light of creation into the heart. And that third breath brings you into the <clears throat> brings you into the heart space. <clears throat> hmm, pardon me. <clears throat> Last Friday, I just caught a cold, and this Friday, it's just finally completing. All right. Um, just want to make sure, can everybody hear okay? I'm just making sure there's not too much background noise here for everybody. Um, if anybody could give me a heads up. Hey, thanks, Kendall. <clears throat> So, Alfredo, past few days have been the most magical days of my life as everything is coming together in full swing. Wisdom ring, wings of talk, and the silver Gaia. <laughs> Spirit, spiritual momentum overdrive. Yes, man, that is for sure. Um, oh, wow. So, just... Feeling the container that we create right now. And if any of you guys saw the, the channel that I posted on social media yesterday, it was one from 10 years ago with uh, the Elders 3 and Brenda. So yeah, I'm just really feeling into this container that we have created here together when we come online. Those who watch this in the future, it just brings everybody in together. And all of us that are holding that energy with this wisdom ring and that new on the wings of talk, um, I just feel that going through the collective of, of us that are right here and now and just feeling a lot of beautiful shifts. And, and that's also in reference to that channel that my sister Brenda did on the 11, 11, 11, um, 10 years ago. And basically that's what that channel from the Elders 3 was saying was is that as we do the work and we hold space, we affect our neighbors, we affect those around us. And it's just really interesting this morning feeling everybody coming into our space, into our container, again, those that watch in the future and how that is just shifting through all of us. Um, you know, this, this whole movement in consciousness 
is affecting everybody on the planet and farther. Um, so yeah, thank you all for for participating in all this. I'm gonna blow these rings around the camera lens. Um, so goodness. Um. Whew, wow. Yeah, that's all wonderful and potent stuff. So, um, and then here on the chat, everybody's talking. Um, you know, uh, sharing with these new energies in the wisdom rings. Um, so anyway, um, gosh, yeah, here at a hotel lobby in Denver, my daughter's upstairs sleeping. So I thought I'd let her sleep because we stayed up last night late. So, um, took her out of school yesterday. We're actually down here going to an archeological convention today because as many of you know, one of my side distractions is working with artifacts that come out of Mexico. And these artifacts depict all kinds of beings. Um, I just have this new tablet from Mexico that has um, Isis on the back, perfect picture of Isis in the Egyptian style. And there's also an Ankh in the disc with wings, um, the pyramid with the eye. And on the other side, on the front side is Anubis and another being that I don't recognize um, from the Egyptian culture. But um, he's come out of Mexico, and I'm here for an archaeological convention because we cannot find any universities here in the United States that will carbon date these tablets and these artifacts. Um, they just do not want to put their reputation. They are a you know state universities, and um, because basically the the results of this stuff would totally throw out all history as we know it including you know i mean because egyptians and egyptian deities in mexico on these tablets and in mexico they call it astalon or atlantis which you know we see it as one larger global civilization but anyway point of the story is is that there is a convention going on here in the boulder colorado area where there's some gals who own a um own the equipment to carbon date and it feels like they want to rock the boat so i'm going to go see them today with the tablet and see if they can carbon date the glues that hold some of these pieces on and we're expecting them to be 10,000 36,000 maybe even 50,000 plus um and carbon dating only goes to 50,000 and you know the reason that i do this like i say i call it a distraction but it's to me it's just helping to blow the right side of the brain a little bit so that it helps us just open up and you know it expands consciousness when we pop that side of the brain a little bit anyway um we'll move on to our 50 questions friday here for november 12th i'll silence my phone um let's see yeah um yeah the the wisdom rings and somebody had mentioned the the torsion wisdom rings and, and that's it too is that um you know several years ago during one of the radionics conventions we created the torsion ring which we put into the harmony ring which is a part of all of our tools now which basically means that you can create a third field in between these rings and um you you just hold them slightly apart and you can do this with any of our rings is you bring them together almost touching and you know and of course you go into the heart space and you just feel that energy building up you can imagine like a a ball or a field of energy that builds between the two and as you just move it back and forth you can tangibly feel that ball of energy that's just building and you can just keep expanding that and as you expand that put it around you Put around the camera and tend that it goes out into the field of everybody however you wish to use that energy um, because it's a quantum energy that responds to consciousness responds to intention um, so i'm going to go over here to the questions tab 
Um, and again, please do drop in some questions. I don't have any um, questions online to answer. Um, they're just more personal questions. So let's see, we'll go over here. Um, and Kendall, can you talk a little bit more about the Wisdom Ring energy uses? Um, certainly. So whether you are using the Wings of Talk or you are using, you know, any of the size of Wisdom Rings, um, basically what a phenomenal way to clear things. Um, let's say you have a toothache. You put your attention onto the toothache, you feel it, you feel it fully, then you put your attention with the ring in that field, and the attention is on both of those together, and then you just let it go. And, you know, and that's, that's the whole new paradigm anyway, is that we bring our divine awareness, our attention onto something that comes into our awareness that, you know, we don't, you know, that we would choose not to um, have to have our attention onto, like an ache or a pain or a physical situation, or the news channel, or you know, a loud, loud sound in the background here. So I'm just going to hold space and put my attention with this fan that this gentleman's using to uh, dry the floors with. And it's, it's interesting because it's just, it's a split second. It's where you put your attention to something, you put your attention to the field, I feel a shift, and then I just let it go. Simple as that. So the using the wisdom rings uh, for, the, for the using, for the doing, simplicity is, is the way to go. Um, you know, and of course I do wear the wisdom rings, you know, around my wrist. This is a prototype that I have around my neck um, and just wearing the pendant. And basically that is going to, um, you know, just being in the fields is fantastic because just being in the fields, again, it is your consciousness that is doing the work. So it's not necessarily your intention so, so much. Your intentions make a huge part of it, yes. But it's not necessarily your intentions or your thoughts or your negative thoughts that are going to affect the field. It is your consciousness, your higher soul self, um, your heart wisdom. And the reason we call them the wisdom rings is because if you allow, and it's part of that whole paradigm of surrendering to the soul, to allowing, um, the soul will just go in and do the work, your consciousness. And it brings that in as, as that light, that wisdom, that wisdom of you which is your consciousness, that's your soul's wisdom. And so the more consciousness we have, the more of our soul's wisdom we are carrying. Um, let's see, question here. Have you, got, have you had experience working with kids at the age two to seven years old? Is there more conscious work involved? So, you know, kids, younger kids, especially a lot of these newer kids that are coming in, like my daughter, she's 11. Um, this is only her, gosh, her first or second time here, maybe her third, but she's only been here like maybe one or two times before. And she doesn't carry a lot of the stuff that we have to work through. Um, you know, so some of these kids, it's actually easier working with them. Um, because they might not carry so much stuff, but they are more connected. I mean, especially, you know, like kids that are toddlers, they are way more connected. And so um, it's easier to work with them. And, you know, like my daughter who's 11, I've never really pushed her into doing any of this work. And I'm just now teaching her to harmonize situations like at school with friends, with teachers things like that. So she's just now beginning to do that style of work to harmonize. But for the younger kids, um, basically you just hold space for them. Um, it used to be that we could put them in bubbles, but we're, we're asked to not put, use bubbles anymore because that was part of the old paradigm of, you know, protection, that kind of thing. Um, the whole new paradigm is just holding space, that high vibration space, like with the wisdom ring 
and just allowing them to to shift. Um, let's see. Can you access Can you access the Wisdom Ring etherically? For example, like the Alchemist Pendant. I'm from Australia, and it appears we won't be able to get anything for a while. Oh, yeah. Actually, um, Australia. I know we can't ship through the U.S. Postal Service, but we can still ship through UPS. The last that I knew. Um, yeah, I know there's been some issues with shipping, but yes, you can totally access these tools um, through just the photos. And so if you sit down with photos of um, the wisdom rings or the on the wings of talk, I actually posted a photo on social media the other day of all the wings of talk that um, I was electroplating that are just stacked up. Um, that's a great photo to sit with too, but you know, and you don't need the photo. You can just go into the heart space and ask for that field to come in. And again, as I was saying here in the beginning of this, that field is expanding to all of us right now. So you can access that by just going back to this video again, going into the heart space and just feeling into it, just being quiet within yourself, feel into it and allow. And that's all it takes. Again, these are tools of consciousness, so you don't really have to do a lot. Um, let's see, uh, Nika, what tools are best for working with acupressure points and meridians of the body? Um, so there's the wands are a pretty good one to be working with um, acupressure points. I know a lot of people who use the dragon wand um, or the shaman's wand on, on the acupressure points. Um, but you can also set, you know, any of the tools on there. Uh, I'd almost say check out the new On the Wings of Talk that'll be out Monday. It's just as potent as the large version. But um, the On the Wings of Talk might be a a, a good one to sit on on that space too um but otherwise the wands are ones that i know of a lot of people who are into um that are acupuncturists or that that utilize the the wands in their modalities as well and will the wisdom rings be available in silver that is really hard to say um i don't know where we're going with this energy if it's going to keep expanding um if it's going to replace some tools, I have no idea where we're going with it right now, to tell you the truth. Because within the Wisdom Rings, you can find and feel the energetics of the, um, the Divine I Am as well as the Chalice in there. Um, we are working on some prototypes for the Wisdom Generators. This stone is not going to come out, but this was just one of the prototypes that we were playing with. And, you know, because we play with a lot of prototypes, work with them before we, we release them. Um, ah, how's the wings it's on the wings to talk pendant yeah hell man love 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 this thing um we just started making them earlier this week and um well actually last week we we started making them and you know we were getting fine-tuning everything in the process so that we could go through and do our time study so Actually, as soon as I get back home this weekend, I'm going to finish up the time study by time studying the electroplating. And then by Sunday, I'm hoping that we can have a price on these, have the photographs and the web page ready. So our intention is to have the On the Wings of Talk pendant available on Monday. Um, let's see. Does the pyramid template bring through the wisdom ring? You know... I don't think that we have updated the pyramids yet. I no, I don't think we have, but we will. Um, by next week here, we will update those pyramids to make sure that the energetics of the wisdom ring comes through. Because any of those, you know, those geometry structures like the ascension pyramids, those are capable of holding, you know, more energies than most of our tools do at the current moment. So, yes, we will definitely be putting the Wisdom Ring into the Ascension Pyramids. Let's see, how far do the Wisdom Rings project out? Um, 
That's a good question. For the generators, we haven't played with that yet. Um, theoretically, though, a tensor field will go for miles, some say infinity. It just, you know, it's not really as much on, you know, especially like the newer generators, like the Divine IM generator. It's It has a smaller physical sphere of influence in that it's only doing about two city blocks. But it's, it's how high and deep and far reaching on a soul level that it goes that's that's where it's huge and with the wisdom rings oh my goodness is it going far back i mean it is going through not only everything as a human but everything that your soul is i mean it is it's deep <clears throat> JB, it feels like there's another wand on the way. Would it be called wisdom? <laughs> you know it. Um, yeah, I do feel that there is a wand that's going to be coming through that will allow us to use the wisdom energetics in an active way. And yeah, it's my intention that whatever this new wand is that's being birthed is going to be something pretty phenomenal pretty major I'm, I'm sure intending and seeing too so i'm glad you picked up on that um with that with the new one coming through let's see do you know what the conscious energy of reiki actually contains is it more different from the energy of your tools um so that's a great question and actually you know the the energetics of the tools um harmonize very well with reiki i was seeing if we ever put that into the tools and gosh for some reason i thought that we put reiki into our tools sometime way back like with the harmony ring but you know it, they they feel separate but yet they synergize together well and it's like they are you know the the tools that we create are so broad of what we put into them and they've been created through lifetimes so i mean there's so much within these tools um but reiki is they feel like they exist in the same set of fields and they seem to kind of intermingle but they are still a, a separate thing um Tom Canyon wrote a book, The Arcturian Anthology. And in the Arcturian Anthology that Tom Kenyon wrote, he talks about the original dispensation of Reiki in Japan um, through the Arcturians. <laughs> so if that's something that interests you, um, and there's a little bit of, uh, you know, he, he's, Tom's not really so far out there. Because, I mean, he brings in, cites some great uh, historical examples as well with that whole concept of, of Sonic Kamara uh, and Arcturian being the one who dispensed Reiki originally. So, yeah, it just depends on if that resonates with you to check that out, the Arcturian Anthology. Um, what is the best tool to use for working with asthma? Oh, that's a really a good question. Um, and I do not know, you know, I don't know as if I am familiar with anybody um, giving that feedback or the testimonial with asthma. I don't think they have. Um, and so, you know, to me, the wisdom rings would be the one to work with with asthma. Um, or the on the wings of talk or an on the wings of talk pendant or a wisdom ring pendant um, because it's simply with these new tools and these new fields it's simply you know if you wore it as a pendant and it comes up you just simply put your attention there and let it go and i know with a lot of reoccurring issues that we have you know we're so used to fighting with these issues and again as part of the whole new paradigm is not fighting with the issue just um allowing it to be and allowing it to be gone 
all with the same brush stroke. It is the allowing, allowing it to exist and allowing it to not exist all at the same time. That is powerful and I feel a lot of you feeling that. And I see a lot of you allowing that right now or I feel it and that is absolutely beautiful. Um, and then just don't fight it anymore because truly right now, everything is on its way out. We don't even have to do this kind of work if we're patient and we allow. Um, everything is shifting. And um, let's see, can we do a meditation today? Um, gosh, maybe. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll put that in the field and see about a meditation here today. Um, so going back over here to the chat again. Um, Ron, thank you very much for your testimonials, for your sharing of your, of your experiences. I'm going to read another one here from Ron. The moment the wisdom rings arrived, I tried the torsion technique on my wife's foot where she had been having pain, and she had a nearly instantaneous visceral physical response in almost violent release. I wish I could share a video here. Wow. Ooh, that is absolutely beautiful. Um, yeah, expect instant miracles. We don't have to carry and fight with this stuff anymore. It is a choice. It is truly a choice if you want to keep continuing carrying and fighting with the things. Um, might not be a conscious choice from here, though that does affect it. It is, you know, I still have a tough one with that because, you know, it was, it's been less than a year ago that Brenda was always telling me, you know, when I was saying, man, I got to let go. I don't know what I'm holding on to. She always says, well, it's a choice. And I never understood that. I'm still trying to understand it. But yet, I mean, understand it enough to put it into words. But yes, everything truly is a choice on whether you want to allow it to no longer be a part of your suffering of your path or you can just allow it to not be um, let's see uh, let's see I've carried the original wings of talk in my purse with me for a long time it'll be awesome to wear the new on the wings of talk yes and that's it if you have a wings of talk you it is still a phenomenal tool and you know I I still put one in my daughter's backpack for school because that the the wings of talk and, and they are on clearance right now too the regular wings of talk um, because the wings of talk are still creating a phenomenal field and they're still doing great work and it's something that you can put into a purse or a bag or a backpack and not worrying about it getting harmed so that's why I put it in my daughter's school bag uh, works better than a tensor field generator for being able to hold up on the physical plus it does a lot more than the generators truly all right, go back over here to the questions tab. Let's see, we anchor in columns or spheres of energy using the wisdom ring or any other rings. Oh, let's see. So, when you use the wisdom ring, okay, so if you are anchoring in the energetics, um, it's something that we used to not ever really do or teach because I never really felt at the time I never even felt into it at the time that it would be possible to anchor in that energetics um, because to me the the holding those energetics in place it is um, like like when we first started to anchor columns of light um, when you anchor a column of light yourself and you're just bringing you know that energy from creation and bring it with the energy of the earth you're making a column of light that column of light will stay there for eight days unless you put your attention back onto it and then we created the global love and gratitude grid where we called in other master beings to hold their attention onto those columns of light and all the columns of light connected to it as a grid and that it was there them holding their attention there that kept those there 
And also in the very beginning, we didn't anchor the global love and gratitude grid into electrical stations because it just wasn't able to connect in with that grid system. So we'd always call in a being in the highest and best to hold their attention there, to hold that energy in place, that column of light. Now, as I've been teaching the anchoring the columns of light, we started to use the, um, the alchemist set here recently to basically attune people to that energetics of the chalice so that when they anchor a column of light with the golden fire and light rod with the wand and they anchor that column of light that they intend to bring in that energetics of the chalice in there that chalice ring so I will not say that anything is impossible anymore as far as using a ring to anchor that light into a space. But what I would do, and, and this is this is just what I would suggest doing, is to do the column of light. Um, I've got several videos out there. And on the twistedsage.com, under the resources, there is light anchoring. And I would just anchor a column of light and I would intend and ask for that energy of the wisdom ring and the wings of talk to come in. And that's another thing, too. The wings of talk was another one of the tools that you don't need the physical tool for. Uh, the original wings of talk or the on the wings of talk that you can use these to anchor not only a column of light, but it also creates a space like a, a disc shaped saucer spa shaped space. So it creates a field as well as a column of light. So I'll take that back on anchoring the columns of light. I would go to the Wings of Talk, the original page. And under that webinar, we teach you how to anchor the column of light with a Wings of Talk and then just ask for this on the Wings of Talk energy to come in with this column of light that you anchor. Because then I know for certain that that holds that space and it holds a field. And the on the wings of talk has that energy of the wisdom ring. So, yes, sorry for the long story and the long answer. The short answer on um, can we anchor in the columns or spheres of energy using the wisdom ring? Yes, use the on the wings of talk. It's simply going into the heart space. Again, watch the video on the original wings of talk, which is going into the heart space and just using your intention your imagination your visualization of this creating a column of light and it also creates a field and it is the um not only are these carrying the energetics of the golden fire and light wands that will create those columns of light but it also has talk and all the other master beings that come with this that they can hold their attention onto that space to keep that energetics anchored there. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, can you talk about the GMO transformation plate that you put into the columns of light? So when when Slim asked us to create a, um, a plate with three rings and the four coils and a crystal in the center, um, we saw that that was transforming GMOs. So we put that energetics into all of the rings. So when you use any of these tools, any yeah. tools, um, it is going to bring through that energy field that when you, let's say you take a packet of GMO seeds and when you have the seeds and you put them in a ring or the wings to talk or any of your tools, when you put those seeds there, those seeds will revert back to their highest aspect it's um they will revert to their highest aspect of of that plant of its dna when you take a seedling and you take a seedling and you expose it to those energies like a tensor field generator in a garden or in a commercial you know cornfield whatever and you have seedlings and you expose it to these energies, by the time it reaches maturity and has its own seeds, they will also be cleared of any of the GMO traces, um, any of the negative 
aspects of those GMOs. But with the wisdom rings, the wisdom rings, I feel, are going to do it faster because the wisdom rings are allowing, the first thing that we saw with the wisdom rings is that they were allowing the consciousness of the plant to repattern the energy fields to then shift that plant into its highest aspect. Basically, again, it was showing us a plant that was in soil um, that it was then able to, after it repatterned and did the energy repatterning to become the physical plant, it was showing us that the plant was able to reach down and pull nutrients out of the soil that were not there before. Um, so, you know, working with plants and GMOs, yeah, I feel these wisdom ring tools, the, this whole family of wisdom energetics is going to shift plants so much more um you know again you go back to the times of atlantis when we used the energetics of these master crystals to grow such vibrant plants you know that you know we didn't eat meat we 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 got everything we needed from from the plants because they were totally vibrant and beautiful i mean the plants that we have now i mean the apples, the wheat, the corn, the everything, it's all been, all the good stuff's been bred out of that. So imagine if we can go out and use these columns of light, use the generators, use the wings of talk, and start working with all of these commercial agriculture places. You know, you live in California, go anchor columns of light everywhere in all of the produce that's out there. You know, um, imagine how we can start to shift the plant kingdoms on this planet for for everybody to be more nutrient rich um yeah i don't know i'm just excited right now because you know we can do so much and these again these are only tools that are training wheels they help us to be able to do this work on our own and once we attune to these energies and then you know it just ripples out from us we don't actually have to do anything but you know, it's always fun to still do. We're still here with one foot in the third density physical reality. So let's still do some things. Um, well, let's do it. The things that are going to help bridge us into, into the new, into the new. Um, have you done some beneficial mental program? Like everything in my aura should be harmonized and transformed for my greater good or similar. Um, yes. You know, when we do the Merkaba activations, and we work with the Merkaba field, the star tetrahedron, that electromagnetic field around the human body. Um, we put that intention into the Merkaba um, because it will hold and amplify our intentions. And so, you know, um, so yeah, you can put that style of intention, like everything in my aura, to be harmonized and transformed for my greater good. Yeah, just put that intention into your field. Um, and just a simple, easy way for the mind to grab around it and to do it would be to do the Merkaba activation. And again, if you go to twistedsage.com resources, or if you've ever ordered any tools from us, you get the little Merkaba handout. Um, just go to the resources page and go to the Merkaba page, or else we have a whole website, crystalmerkaba.com. And activate your Merkaba field. You can also find it on YouTube. We have several versions of the Merkaba activation on YouTube. Just go through there and then, you know, um, do the Sacred Heart activation as well. That's one of the things that we do with the Merkaba activation these days is when we do the Merkaba activation, we also do the Sacred Heart activation so that energy of the golden fire goes out onto your field. Um, bring in that, that energy of the, you know, of the chalice. Well, actually just bring in the energy of the wisdom ring because that contains the energy of the chalice and the divine I am and the harmonizer and all the tools. So really just bringing in that energy of the wisdom ring, intending that is in your field. And wow, it really starts a wildfire um, in a beautiful, beneficial way. Well, let's see, Victoria, when using the wisdom ring with food, do we put it underneath the food, pass it over the food, and how long do we keep it there? Or can we just hold the ring and send the intention to the food and the water? Um, yeah, you know, that's all I do, Victoria, when I use it with my food or my drinks or whatever. You know, I'll just usually put the ring, 
you know, under my glass or else I'll just, um, you know, because I still like to use these as a visual aid because I know that we can do this all on our own without the tools, especially once we know the field, but they, they are great tools of attention. And so if I have my plate of food here, that's all I would do is I would just intend and let it go. Simple as that. Um, the simpler, the better when we're working from the heart space. And um, this is all in a no time space, so it does not take the time. Um, you know, I still I still like to use the rings, um, you know, even the wisdom ring. Wisdom rings for water are phenomenal. But, you know, I'll still put the wisdom ring under my glass or, you know, around my glass. I have it around my water containers, all that kind of thing, um, because it's still going to be working with on the physical level here of restructuring the physical aspects of the water. Oh, but you can also intend that that is done instantly and not the four to six hours that it used to take for physically restructuring water. Because, you know, dancing with water, the new science of water, the gals there, MJ Pangman, Melanie Evans, you know, they did the testing where with the tensor field of the tensor ring, it would take four to six hours to physically restructure the water. When the, uh, when the Alchemist set came along, man, we were seeing that was dropping down to like an hour or two, but well, around two hours. But I feel that if we did not limit it by our belief, if we just allow it, that it can happen instantly. And I feel that is with totally with these new rings, these new fields, is that it can happen with the physical restructuring instantly. And I feel you all feeling that. And that is a beautiful thing. That we don't, we're getting into a time and space right now where we don't have to wait for the trickle down coming into the dense physical reality and then things happening slowly and like old manifestation. Um, we're talking about creation and instant creation um, through intent and consciousness. So yeah, I feel like, um, you know, with your question there about, about working with the water and the food is, is that, yeah, it's just instant. It is just instant. Um, let's see. Do we need to ask permission from the higher self of people to anchor in the, on the wings of talk or wisdom sphere, or is it benevolent intent enough? So, um, you know, it used to be back in the day when we would do healing with a person, we would always ask for permission. Can I do this healing with you? Because we were working mono a mono we were working human to human person to person and a person can violate the free will of a person you know if they don't ask the permission that was the old paradigm when we do work anymore we go into the heart space we are working soul to soul when you are working with any of these fields we're not we're working with the soul we're working with the soul and the body um both we're working with the human and the soul so you can never violate the free will of a soul when you are going soul to soul. You can never violate the free will of the soul. So when we do the soul level work, um, you know, it's like uh, for for instance, for example, we have um, we have friends who who are the death doors are open. I mean, they're they're ready to pass pass over, and. Um, you know, and it's it's one of those things that, you know, they're ready to go, but they're still holding on. And we can hold the space and the intention for for them to release their body faster, for them to shut down their chakras, for them to uh, be able to release the, the physical body faster, you know, with more grace and ease for everybody involved, especially them. Um, you know, and so we just hold that space for them. You know, I'm, I'm giving you an extreme example of, of, you know, holding space on a soul level. And it is up to their soul, you know. So anytime you're anchoring a column of light, you don't have to worry about violating the free will of anybody. Um, and that's the beautiful thing about using the columns of light and, and any of these tools and, you know, using the energetics of the wings of talk 
or having a tensor field generator expanding out in your space is that it is always, you know, the soul that's in charge. Uh, let's see. Going back over here to the chat side. All right. So we, Whoop Eagle, just talking about um, when he anchors, uh, anchors the, the columns of light and he asked a benevolent being to step in and help hold that energetics. And he said he put in a golden fire generator on its tower about a mile and a half, about a half a mile from this place two years ago, and it's still holding. That is beautiful. Yes, so, you know, he just used that, that visualization and intention of a golden fire generator on the tower and asked um, one of his guides, one of the beings that is there in the highest and best to step in to hold that energy there for them, and it is still there after two years. So, um, yeah, that is that is absolutely beautiful. All right, let's see. I don't know if anybody has any more questions here this morning. Um, gosh, just thinking of a meditation. Um, you know, we can jump in and do some kind of meditation here. I don't know what it will be, but we will find out along the way. Uh, let's see. Do you think the Boba scale is good for qual for quantifying an energy of a space, a person, or a tool? Uh, yeah, certainly a Boba scale is, is, is perfect. Um, you know, we had a friend here probably about eight years ago who, uh, Althea Gray, she teaches, she's in Santa Fe, um, good dowser friend of mine. She teaches. She's a professional dowser, um, and she's the one who inter introduced me to the Bova scale. Um, you know, and, and it actually is something that we've been considering um, making a scale, something of that nature. Because basically, you're you're just it's your intention of finding out on this scale of um, of energetics of something that is beneficial energetically to you so if you look up the boba scale that you'll see that um, some people mark on there like the frequency of, of, of cancer the frequency of different books throughout history um, you know religious texts the the, the boba scale of a uh, archangel all this stuff um, and it was fun because playing with Althea she checked the uh, the the bovis rate of my sister and, you know, because she talked about, yeah, you know, I've taken students up to close to a million, but they just get so spaced out. And she checked my sister and she was like at two million just sitting there. And then my sister went in and this was like eight years ago. And my sister went into just the heart space and went into a meditation centered. And then Althea was just freaking out because she was like getting 15 million, 18 million. She's like, how is that possible? And. I'd be curious to see what the Bova scale of a lot of this stuff is anymore. Um, and you know what? I've always thought about making a whole new scale of consciousness, you know, basically. And I'm sure somebody has one out there. But it's um, because I still think the Bova scale is, is it's a beneficial tool. Um, but I think there's some, I think it needs a little bit of updating on the amount of consciousness instead of just the amount of light or the or the frequency of something um but yeah so a lot of people have checked you know there's um gosh there's a gentleman in in australia who who he does um he makes rings he makes the monsoon coils and things and you know he checks a lot of people's tools and, and talks about their boba scale and um so I know a lot of people who use the, the bulbous scale to measure the energetics of the tools as well. Um, let's see. Is your studio open for visitors? You know, um, gosh, yes, we have our manufacturing, we have our shop, and then we have our studio, and we do have visitors come in. Um, we're still setting up to have the energy spa, you know, not foot baths and stuff, but an energy spa where you get to use all the chambers and they have guided meditations that go with all the chambers. Um, we intended to have that open here in our, in November, but it just hasn't happened yet. So sometime this winter, we will have the Twisted Safe Studios open 
um, officially to where you can go online and you can book an hour, come in and go through all the chambers and, you know, and then at that time you can book a session with me or with Brenda. Um, and, but as of right now, yes, we are open um, to receive visitors at the studio where all the chambers are from uh, 12 to 3 on weekdays. And you can just call into the studio and make an appointment there um, for now because we still use that as, I mean, I still twist my wire there and we still cut wire and um, we do a lot of work there still. So 12 to 3 on weekdays, you can still come in and have sessions at the studio. Uh, right now, we don't have all the meditation set up and that, but people come and use the chambers. We probably get three groups a week that come in. We haven't advertised just locals. Some people fly and drive from all over the world to come in there. But um, we charge 60 an hour, which is prorated. It usually takes people only about 30 minutes to go through there. So it's 30 bucks a person, you know, approximately. Um, and then we have Mary. Mary is the one who answers the phone at the studio. Um, she's the one who her and her husband attuned me to Reiki Master before I really even knew what energy was. Um, so Mary is the one who takes people over um, to the studio to walk people through. And... Um, so yeah, we're definitely open for visitors there. Let's see, when I use the golden light wand or the shaman's wand to clean and clear, the bad energy goes back to the people with intentional bad energy, even when that is not a part of the conscious intention. Is that for their highest good? You know, no, the energy should never go back to the person. That's, you know, my daughter's into working with spells and, you know, candle magic. And I make her cross out all reflection spells in her books because that is just, that's BS. Um, you should never send energy back to a person, you know, especially if somebody's sending you negative energy, don't send it back to them. And no, the tools should never do that. The tools, um, so the bad energy goes back to the people with intentional bad energy, even when that's not part of the conscious intention. You know, there's something deeper going on there but that is not programmed into the tools because the tools in all actuality should harmonize. They should um, just clear it, whether it dissolves it, whether it harmonizes it, however you see and say that, but it never sends anything back um, because that's not part of our paradigm. That's not a part of what the tools are supposed to do. You know, there's so many things that we we as the human can override the tools not consciously i mean we get phone calls for example like somebody has a tensor field generator and um it's not helping with their electromagnetic sensitivities um you know and when we step in and look at it the tools are working perfectly as they're supposed to but it is their their unconscious their their fears their their ever, other things that are overriding what that is doing for them. Um, so, you know, I would like to look more into this, Diane, um, because there's there's something else that's going on there um, if the energies are being sent back because that's, you know, definitely a no-no in my book. And so as far as the tools go, they should not be doing. They won't do that on their own. So there is something else going on. Whether maybe it is that, you know, like you say, is that for their highest and greatest good? I don't know. So, but there is something else going on there. Um, and yeah, that's that's something that um, you know I'd like to sit down with my sister maybe. So maybe uh, Diane get a hold of me on email or something of that nature. Uh, Twisted Sage at Hotmail. And we can look into that and, and see what's happening because, yeah, we definitely, <laughs> you're welcome. And, yeah, thank you. I mean, I I hope I said, yeah, because I, I don't know what it is that's going on, but we'll, we'll help you figure that one out for sure. Um, so, all right. Um, well, let's let's drop into a meditation here um you all let's um you guys let's let's just drop into a field and we're just going to hold space and we're going to bring in the energies of the um the wisdom rings 
and the on the wings of talk. And we'll just sit in that field for a moment. And that's where we'll close out. And then you can just be with that field and with that energy. And it'll be just kind of like an attunement to this energy just to help you um, more consciously, awarely pick up this field. So, all right. Here we go. So just closing your eyes, putting your attention onto your heart, taking that deep breath from the earth, breathing in that loving energy of earth into the heart. Breathing in that loving, supportive energy of creation into the heart. Breathing both those in together. As those two energies mix within your heart that expands your light, you become grounded, connected, and in the heart space. And your light, your wisdom, is just expanding into the body, into every cell, in between every cell. And we're all holding space together in this larger container you are in your sacred space. And we're all creating this larger container together that we hold space for each other. For those here now and those watching this at any time. And we bring in that energy of the wisdom ring. So let's just imagine a giant wisdom ring coming around this entire space. And in the center, we just have that wings of talk. And then we just let that flow, just let that flow out into your life, your world, your loved ones. Beautiful. All right, you all have a most wonderful, blessed week. And just allow your world to shift and change and to come into the most perfect alignment for you in health, wealth, and wisdom. All right, much love.